Roddy Clear's Irish Music Show. KCLR. Yeah, welcome back. It's Roddy with you until one o'clock in the morning. My guest in studio this week, as I mentioned at the outset, is not a musician, but he is an artist. And I came across uh, Daniel Breslin a couple of years ago at the Vibe for Fellow. I come across a lot of people in the industry uh, through uh, that medium, I would have to say, or through that event. And uh, Dan, uh, or as he's known with, amongst his friends, Brezzo, um, uh, was well, uh, listen, let's just introduce you the man he'll be able to give me the full backstory Dan you're welcome thank you uh, I'm going to keep calling you Dan I'm sorry yeah. just, I don't know you as Brazil I just yeah. know you as Dan you call me whichever I you respond know. to many different and this is your first time ever on radio you're telling me it's first time ever on a live radio show I might have been on yeah. things before yeah but definitely Played, first but in, in studio yeah, yeah. absolutely well, yeah. welcome so uh, thank you very much thanks for having us you're calm you. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm feeling calm, yeah. I'm a bit nervous, but yeah. Yeah, calm. no, you'd be yeah. grounds no, with yourself. Nice you, yeah. um, you uh, as I mentioned, there, you and I got to know each other, or we, I became aware of you through the Vibe for Phil. I don't know how many years ago that was, but it was Philomena who, who got you Philomena, on stage. Philomena got me on... Um, I actually left a note on the grave saying I had a poem about her son, and she got back in touch with me one yeah. day, and I was in on site and anyway I couldn't believe it but I got in touch and she got me on remember they did one in the was it Rock City oh god yeah, yeah oh, wasn't oh, it yeah. The, the one so up I did by that and yeah. Smiley Bulger was at that and he yeah. was like you're doing the vibe and then it just became a part but she always was mm. a huge support of me and we'll hear very shortly you have a song about Phil yeah. uh, and now before I go any further on this I, uh, Dan obviously I brought on because of, of our association with the vibe and with Phil Lines and things and all that but it's not only because of that because Dan is, is, is a poet in his own right and we're going to hear uh, a couple of other pieces from him as well one we've recorded at Larry and another one we're going to do live we're going to do two live ones here and see, what got you into poetry in the first place? Um Self development. I think uh, a, a need to express myself mm. and just developing. I, I think the first real influence on me was actually Tupac or something because I heard something. I was like, "Wow, you can say something so powerful, so small, mm. and such small words like you know, keep your head up and stories like that." And then it actually went to Phil Lina. So yeah, the, they were the two things because Phil was real, putting heart, and he was a dub. He was a dub, and he was heart, and he was um, he was a storyteller and. You could just capture emotions and yeah. it's just yeah. your your pieces we myself and Dan were doing a little bit of recording before we came on air just recording some of these pieces they're very hard hitting some of them and they're very uh, uh, true to life uh, there's one what was the name of that one I think you're going you might be doing that one uh, made a deal with the made streets a deal, made a deal with the streets mm-hmm. which that was quite that's quite tough yeah yeah well they, I like to keep them real they, most of my poems come from a real place so mm. if it's not something that I've been through it's something that I see and others, and I, I think there's a bit of myself, obviously, in all of them. Mm. But it's, um, I think there's a realism in nearly most of my poetry, even if it's, mm. you know, somewhere. Yeah. And, and how how do you, um, uh, does, does a poem come to you because you see something on the street or something happens in your life and, you know, do you kind of jot it down in your memory or do you actually physically maybe open the phone and just say a few lines just as a, as a start off a point they how does it to, work they basically? come to me in different ways like just say to Phil Linnett one for instance I wrote that when I was 19 right. I'm older now <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, but that one I just knew I wanted to write something about him mm. and that one actually flowed I was like I read the book The Rocker mm. and I think I read half the book and then I just sat down and about an hour and a half I wrote the first half of the poem and I just stopped like that poem literally I think just flowed mm. in it. Now it's an hour and a half. I don't think I wrote one word and crossed it out. Um, and then I just knew to stop and I started. Then I finished the next half of the book and I finished it. Mm. And I finished like that. And I might have changed two things in it since then. But that one was that. And then others aren't as good and they take longer. So yeah. Some of them are your own process. Yeah, it suppose it depends and on the subject them, as and well. I, but it? I knew and I loved Phil Linnett. Like the impression <clears> Phil Linnett made on me when I was at that age was mm. just huge. And I was big lyrics man. And... He was telling stories. He was, I just, you know, really, just really influenced me. So he was someone that is particularly in my teens was just huge. So I knew something was coming. So maybe I was fermenting the bits of it, which was my own. And then I knew more to the story and it just flowed. So that was mm. easy. And then others are your own personal pieces, heartbreaks, things like but that. But some of the stuff that you, we were inside, and I'm not going to go into it on air because that's your personal stuff, but there's, well, been, a lot of, there's, there's been a lot of crap in, in, in your life. Yeah, well, I have a sister you know. going through a hard time she, yeah. and she's been on, on the streets and stuff like that. And yeah. That's that's been actually the last few years, so that kind of rips the heart out. That's, that's maybe 
my most recent years have more pain in my poetry than I'd like. Mm. But um, but that's what's there. I'll be true to what's there. Does that help you? It helps you. I'd like to be in a better place sometimes to be writing more positive ones, but Mm. a lot of it is about coming through and dealing with pain and getting on. But um, help in terms of maybe help me deal with the situation. Mm. Yeah, in terms of finding something to express, because actually... I just see kind of, for want of a better term, taking you away from her situation for a little while and and putting it on paper for your own piece of life, for your own health. it helps clarity and stuff. Mental health. Well, mental health, and that it was hard, it was very hard to keep my mental health together during that period, when Mm. you're watching someone go through this and they keep going through it. Especially somebody so close. Someone so close, and like, my father died when I was young. Me and my sister have a a bond. It was big, she's a big part of my identity to get Mm. her through. Mm. And uh, to see them struggling, so yeah, no, I'd say it was, it was the toughest. Last few years have been the toughest. How's she I've doing? Uh, she's in treatment at the minute, so she's good. doing good, uh, good, which is a good place to do. And yeah. has she has she is she aware of your poetry about her, or that it's inspired by her, or because of her? Or? Uh, well, some of it is, you know. She'd relate to, uh, like she said it to me there recently, like because uh, I think she in one of her outbursts she was slagging my poetry and uh, <laughs> stuff like that uh, but um, she, yeah, was, but she was like she's like I actually relate to it because a lot of it is about standing up and some of mine is growing up without a father just find them your own way to to yeah. to develop so she relates to some of it yeah yeah, yeah well, my, my dad died when I was very young as mm. well but I didn't find an, uh, an expressive outlet until I did radio and that's maybe she hasn't stuff. found her expressive outlet yeah. you know so that yeah. saved me in lots of ways well know? we wish her well uh, yeah. Danny you know I, I, I can't really imagine that kind of a situation thank because it's, it's never touched my life to the to that extent uh, but we wish her well and uh, um, I, I, I I would imagine that she's probably secretly really chuffed that you know in, in her own way she's inspired you to write yeah well uh, the writing so. comes the writing comes so yeah. it's, it's it just inspires different things, and yeah. it's like. Yeah. When did you first start writing? I think I had an English teacher, and he got me to write a poem. And I was I was always writing in primary school. I used to be asked to read out my essays. Uh, they actually, I, I work in a primary school at the minute, and they, that's they do authors' chair. They actually encourage all kids to read out, which is really great. Good. But back yeah. then, it wasn't as much like that. Yeah. But I used to get asked, so I was writing there, and then I wrote the first poem and primary school I was made write a poem and I, about I didn't I was like how do you write a poem I was like that was foreign to me I didn't have any desire to do it and they just said write it about your most meaningful thing and at mm. the time it was my room so that was my solitude where I listened to music I was always big into music yeah. some of it not so good <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I was going I, you kind of touched on it there um, is, is, could anybody be a poet yeah, I think so yeah I think yeah I, mm. um like you, oh, like uh, if you, if you're if you if you're trained to find your voice, I think that's what poetry is. Yeah, finding like, and because your poetry, um, like I think I said to you before we came on air, to a lot of people, poetry is kind of like a little bit la di da, you know, mm. all the poets. Mm. Just but boy, you and there's another poet uh, people might be aware of called John Commons. Yeah, it's dub too. poetry. Is that what he calls it? Yeah, John Commons or is scat. Just, I, I, I I don't know what he calls it, uh, but the, Scatman. Like, kind of he's thing. he's John Cummins is like oh, he's incredible. No, he's amazing, and he's like got his own rhythms and yeah. like he's just an experience because he can do so many different. He does it with Shackalack, which is incredible. Yeah, he does band, loads, yeah. and he's he's got such rhythm. He's mm. um, he's his but own thing. Between you and him. Over the last number of years, I kind of like looked at poetry a little bit differently, and kind of started listening to it a little bit more. Maybe it's because it's the type of poetry that you do that that, that has kind of caught my my attention. Um, we spoke a moment ago. We're going to get a piece from you now before we go to a break. So we might as well start with the fellow one. Yeah. Uh, since we're talking about it. Dan performed this uh, this year, the vibe just gone. I think he did it two years ago as well. I've even done three it. Years. I'd say I've done it a couple of times I've, now. At this stage. I've done it at least eight, seven to eight times over the last fifteen really? years. I'd say. At many? one point every second, I'd say possibly, yeah, because that's scary. <laughs> and then pre vibes and stuff like that. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah and it was in different ones, and yeah. yeah and isn't it amazing how, uh, with any kind of music lovers, but particularly rock audiences, they can be a little bit intolerant sometimes if they're not hearing the music of the people they want to hear. And a yeah. po- oh, we're going to have a bit of portrait. Oh God! Then you walk on. I said the first time you did it must have been quite daunting. It was, yeah. It was, it they're hard. They're yeah, hard. You're looking they? at them, and I, and actually, at one of the gigs, you might remember there was beers being thrown on stage and everything because <laughs> yeah. they didn't like the act. And uh, so when you're getting up to do a poem, but I, at the minute I've built up a rapport, and I know I'm known by. Yeah, you gain the respect members. very quickly. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who will silence the crowd for me, and yeah. because you go on and people are. I'm drunk. not wasting a Budweiser on him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it is. You're worried, but actually, like, I think like the 25th vibe. 
was the best feeling I had because it was Vicar Street sold out and it was like I knew the audience I'd become to trust them because I'd done it a few times that they loved the material mm. so to that big a crowd and you know that they they like it if they listen to it and I knew mm. I knew so um, must be very pleasing for you as as a writer as an artist as a poet that you get that respect that oh suddenly they're quieting down for me yeah at that you one know? I did and that one the 25th vibe I was just I was especially that one yeah I was wondering would I ever get up again and it was like no, that was special. I really enjoyed that moment. Sometimes you don't enjoy the moments, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I get nervous, and but um, yeah, I really savoured that moment because I was like, I'm going on Vicar Street, yeah. and it's yeah. and it's a crowd that love filled in it. Yeah, you know, because there has been times in the past where someone's like, uh, I'll say a poem, and they're trying to show you up. Yeah. And I'll ask the people, like, oh, do you like Phil Linnet? And that gets me out, because everyone loves Phil Linnet. Everybody <laughs> does, but whether they know it or not. Yeah. <laughs> but we like to think that yeah. anyway. In your own time, then, this is uh, uh, Breslau, Dan Breslau, yep. and what's it called? I keep forgetting the title. Um, Ode to Phil. Ode to Phil. Mm. On an August morn, a star is born, in the form of a child, though early man or mild, this child was styled for the wild. On this emerald shore grows a black Irish rose, had to fight from the start before he could succeed in his glory. Here's the man that shapes the story. Born black and streets predominantly white, from an early age, racial taunts were a common sight. This is where this rose showed all his might, and with a greater insight, resisted the urge to fight, and persisted with his taste for life. Born a mixed breed of the human seed, it was with a slightly different take on life the one he'd lead. With no father around in this old Catholic town, he was often plastered, a black Irish bastard, but with his mother mastered, a belief he was unique, and all this may only serve to propel him to reach his peak. Later challenged his emotions in his artistic potions. His musical devotions reaped the benefit when his heart opens. He had that certain persona, that certain aroma, that scent of a star. Hell-bent and determined to get far, he was one for a jar, often found at the bar. At one with the boys, but knew other joys. With his physique and charm, ladies would compete for his arm. Different one each week, when you're young, what's the harm? Men would warm to him, ladies would swarm to him. A star was born within. Took his shape and his youth, put his fate in his group. Success to date stands as proof that he was right in his pursuit. Of artistic recognition, but there are hazards in this position. It can be hard to maintain in the game of fame, life in the fast lane can exert a strain which can start a chain. Of drugs, drink and rock and roll, in this lifestyle that is hard to control. Weighs down the soul, you fall way down a hole. Had a taste for that liquor and that taste was growing bigger. Drugs were changing quicker, he was ruining his liver. So he took a step back and just focused on his music, his lyrical genius and ability to use it, to fuse it into something special. Liver damaged us where this rose shed his first petal. Temporarily stopped drinking, but this ship was slowly sinking. The outside eye can never truly see what occurs in privacy, but in hindsight, he lyrically, almost blatantly, described his descent and his repent. He's just a boy that has lost his way. He's just a boy, that's all. Echo my bedroom wall, emphasise his downfall, echo cries for help in his withdrawal, the lies he used as a shawl to disguise his body's dying call. The heart rendered may Philip always be remembered. On these emerald shores left so many besotten, on these emerald shores our black rose ensured he will never be forgotten. For those who come in their throngs to embrace in his songs, those who love him rights or wrongs, and those that still long to have the man, the legend, the rocker. Back for one more anchor. Back one more time to conquer. For those who wish you could have stayed longer. To your Sarah, Kathleen, Graham, Phyllis and Dennis. Those who held the heart of Philip, the man behind the menace. That family man with that long chin, who at the slightest whim with a flash of that warm and grin put women in a spin. The legend that is and the man that's been and the legacy that follows him. We wallow in self-pity as we remember the black rose that graced this lonely city. The renegade that did ride like the wind that died as a king because we'll remember the man behind the image before the drug that got a hold of him but never got his soul within in his lyrics and his songs his memory still lives on and as the sun goes down on this old town you can almost hear the sound of the Bay of Hote Hum for Crumlin's Wild One Wild One you've been away too long come back home now will you and that my friends is one of the reasons why I adore well 
fill up line and thin Izzy, but also the vibes. The, and that is so special. And if you imagine that being being recited to uh, a crowded room of died in the wool thin Izzy bands, you know, well done. Um, and the shame of it, of course, is they didn't make the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, uh, no, that's a disappointment that they deserve to be there. OK, got to take a quick break. Dan's going to, we're going to talk to him a little bit more and we've got uh, time for uh, probably two more away from, from that subject because uh, as I mentioned earlier on, he does a lot more uh, other bits of poetry other than just um, uh, about Phil and all the rest. So come back to us in a few moments. This is Roddy Clear's Irish Music Show. Although it's not really um, uh, music just at this particular moment in time. I'm talking to Dan Breslin who is a poet from Dublin and you just heard him recite a piece there uh, all about Phil Lynott. Now outside of that we, we touched on, on, on other um, uh, pieces as well uh, Preso. Uh, so we're going to do one that we recorded a little bit earlier on just give you give your a break on it because I'm very acutely aware of the fact that also this is your first radio interview yep. and there's a little bit of nerve sitting as well and that's um, yeah because I never messed that one up Huh? <laughs> I never messed up. Well, if you're going to mess up, you might as well do it on that one. You might as well do it with me because I don't mind too much, you know. Now, tell me about this next piece, Take a Breath. Uh, Take a Breath is probably, well, it's based on me really coming out of a point of um, just going through pain and just accepting, kind of maybe losing yourself in the pain a bit, you know, because mm. so, sometimes, but, um, and it's about trying to. Just meet yourself and be okay with meeting different parts of yourself and being okay with... Um, Anybody who's had any kind of sorrow or sadness or upheaval in their life will relate strongly to this piece. I know I certainly did. Let's have a listen. This is uh, Rezo again and a song called Take a Breath. Take a Breath. I go through life hurtling at great speeds. I go through life and life goes through me. I don't know where each experience leads. But when it's getting too much, I just remind myself to breathe. Most often things don't go the way we want them to. But in that lies the making of the soul. The making of you. In how you deal with your defeats. In how you react when you're deflated. For life ain't always sweet. It'll cheat you, beat you and frustrate you. But in that remember those who made you. And remember you're a child. And it's all right to lose your way, kid. It's all right to go a little wild. In fact, it's often those who lose their way know the right road when they take it. For they've walked paths that have gone astray and they know what risk, loss and real heartbreak is. Some people keep themselves in check, always play it safe, till they get close to death and they see a lot of waste. So when you're feeling quite upset and you're getting sick of your mistakes, why don't you go out and take a breath? I feel a little thanks for what's in place. Take a look at those who are near you, who care for you now, and try let loose a little fear from you. Believe it will all work out somehow. Things don't happen for a reason, but you must find your reason in the happening. It's all right to take some time out, soul search, breathe in, exhale. For eventually we must get back to acting. This life is where it's at. Being alive is all there is. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. There's enough of that. Take a breath. Exhale. Live. Make mistakes. Take a break. Take a breath. Exhale. Live. Feel the weight. Take a break. Take a breath. Exhale. Live. Feel upset. Take a break. Take a breath, exhale, live, accept your place, feel some thanks, take a break, take a breath, exhale, live, take your time, calm your mind, take a breath, exhale, live, let go what you can't control. Take a breath, exhale, live, meet what's inside, when you need to, cry, take a breath, exhale, live, and when yourself has been met, take a step, take a breath, exhale, and when yourself has been met, take a step. Take a breath, exhale, 
live. Take a breath. Well, you were just saying we did. We do we record two pieces there? Do we? Do we uh, oh, okay. Did we record two sections of it there twice? I think it got caught at the end, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. But never mind. Yeah, I, don't it, I don't think it took too much for it. <laughs> Take a breath. It's called, and uh, as I mentioned, I think a lot of people uh, will um, uh, it will resonate with them on that one as well. Um, d- does poetry come easy to you, Dan? Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of does. It's uh, like it's how I kind of deal with a lot of stuff now and. Or have so yeah, yeah like if something's going on I never force it I don't like to force poetry so it's like mm. if it comes it comes and I think I'm interested in so many different things that it can be personal processes things and I I, I don't think I'm shy from where mm. I go in my poetry you know sometimes I probably reveal a bit too much but uh, you know there's a yeah. lot of that and that's what but I'd imagine it's, it's quite cathartic as well it's hugely cathartic and in many ways it saved me and it's like yeah, um, yeah and like even in that like that's all about that. That's where I'm at now. Living mm. there's a, there was a period of time where it's like you were surviving, yeah. just through things. So that that's what that's at. Yeah, and that's very it's... real. I only wrote that in the summer, so it feels very real and current to me. That's what I'm like. I mentioned to you Mo, again off air, um, and you you're positive about it. You're you're looking to get some of these published eventually. Perhaps I'm going to put out a book this year. Yeah, yeah that's oh, it's the goal. going to happen. That's oh no, it will. Yeah, no, it will. Yeah, yeah. I haven't wanted to. Uh, you want to be in the right place when you. you're doing things, so you can go with the motion of it. Yeah, but um, not that I think so. But um, yeah, no. So this year, I want to put out a collection of poems, and yeah. uh, I'll probably follow it soon. And because like, I have about four or five hundred poems, so I'll follow it soon with another book. Well, if you're going to launch it, I think the best time, the best date you could launch that is either the twentieth of August. Or the fourth of January, because you'll have a captive audience in 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 the Lizzie people. The, the August thing is, is is Philip's birthday, so you know, yeah. I think guaranteed they'll make you a millionaire straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you get a few drinks yeah. into them beforehand as well. What's next for you? In terms of uh, poetry, work, uh, gigs. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, don't, it, it, I don't. At the minute, I'm doing a master's in psychotherapy and counselling. Uh, that keep you busy. I'm, I'm a taxi driver and a special needs assistant as well, so my time is consumed. So You're a busy man. I, well, I get when I get to, I, I do it. There's others that get to perform at more gigs than me and stuff. Mm. But uh, in the summer, just gone, I did more gigs. And I, if I could launch the book in the summer, that'd be great. But it's my mind to get out and do more gigs, and I'll go when I can, you know. But yeah. um, good. Well, the very I'm best not, of luck to yeah, you. Thank you very much. You know, you're going to do one more piece for us, and this is quite hard hitting. Will I do it now? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. If you want to, we'll finish out on this. First of all, thanks for coming down. Ah, uh, thanks a million for having me. And um, I have a print you know. here for you, buddy. I may give it to you now. What's this there. now? This is the Phil Linneth. Ah, oh, you're a son man. Yeah, so this is an uh, the artist, uh, Lindsay, Lindsay Wright. Oh, yeah. I know her work. And, uh, so if I, anyone wants to buy prints, check out my website, <laughs> dadsofbrenzelpoetry.com. I'll have it up on eBay <laughs> later on. Okay. What's it worth? <laughs> so Dad, thanks so much. I, I very much appreciate yeah. that. Uh, that, that that'll, that'll take pride of place. Uh, this next piece is, is quite hard hitting. It's, it's uh, Well, you give me the premise of it. This one is just about surviving. And it's about someone probably not coming from a good home life and finding their family outside of the home and how something that helps you survive maybe has its negative consequences too. Mm. And and that's basically it. So it's called He Made a Deal With These Streets and it's just how we get caught up in things that help us survive as we're young. Mm. And then there comes a time where you maybe need to outgrow it. Right. And that's moving on. Shift. Then. Yeah, there'd be a bit okay. of myself in that, and I think there's a bit of everyone in that. I think so. In your own time, Dan. Dan Breslin, okay. then. Thanks once again. Thank you, Roddy. Thanks for having me. Made a deal with these streets. He made a deal with these streets when he was just a kid. Gave himself to the group, and the group let him live. He found safety in these numbers. He found love on streets of stone. And what a kid won't do for love when he ain't get no love at home. He gives himself to the group, form an unspoken bond, vulnerable in your youth, in the group you feel strong. They say there's strength in numbers, but strength comes in your mind, and that can be the very thing you sacrifice to the group over time. The group got its own mentality, got its own rules, a lot of people here are hiding their reality, and are scared to look like fools. But he learned quick, he learned to save face, step back boy, now know your damn place. Don't do anything too brave, don't make yourself look soft, for that kind of name is hard to shake off. Now leaders can normally do what they want, but a leader, that ain't him. He just wants to get out the house, he just wants to fit in. He just wants to escape his home and all that goes on there. And right now streets of stone are a breath of fresh air. He made a deal with these streets. When he was just a kid he gave himself to the group and the group let him live. There are dangers out there, you ain't gotta look too far. Sometimes you get beat up for just being who you are. 
Some of them bigger kids hate, some of them bigger kids taunt, and the feeling of somewhere safe is all this little kid wants. He's young and weak, about here he starts to feel like he belong when the ones meant to protect him are the ones that do him wrong. Just looking for some peace, when that peace is hard to find, he go out and hit the streets, laugh away his troubled mind. He made a deal with these streets, when he was just a kid he gave himself to the group, and the group let him live. There ain't many bad kids here, they just escape in bad times, looking for a little bit of love, anywhere that they can find. There's love in this circle, they got each other's back, step to one, step to all. But they don't just get down like that. They laugh, they listen, for each other are always there, give each other something they've been missing, but of what? They are maybe not even yet quite aware. You look down your nose, they make you look somewhere else. Protection's not something they done like clothes, that's something they built themselves. They kind of grew as one, maybe a little more out than in, trouble went hand in hand with fun, now trouble's more often what they're in. They made a deal with these streets. When they were just kids, they gave themselves to the group and the group let them live. Time ticks on. He gets older too. Some others now doing to them little kids what them big kids used to do. That don't sit right and that don't sit easy, but he thinks, hey, that's life. I remember when them kids used to tease me. And rouse a lot, reminds him of what he was running from and the peace that he once got. Well, he's wondering where it's gone. They made a deal with these streets. When they were just kids, they gave themselves to the group, and the group let them live. He made a deal with these streets, when he was just a kid. Now the deal's starting to look less sweet. Wonders what other deal there is. When I grow up, I want the same things as those kids. Just a little bit of love, and a safe place to live. Daniel Breslin, and uh, um, you are on social media. You have a website. I do, danielbreslinpoetry.com. Danielbreslinpoetry.com, yeah. if anybody wants to check out a bit more on Dan. I'm Daniel Breslin Poetry on Facebook. And, and, as well. and you're Brezzo on, on Brezzo Instagram, Brezzo Daniel Breslin or Brezzo or something like that. On <laughs> find you everywhere. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Listen, thanks a million. That was great. Thank that was, you so that was much really for having me on. Stuff. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.